Esteemed guests, welcome to the 24th World Knowledge Forum. Finally, we are out of the pandemic that has plagued humanity for more than three years. However, before we can breathe a sigh of relief, we find ourselves facing yet another challenge. Supply chain issues, which gained prominence during the pandemic, have now become a matter of geopolitical confrontation. Furthermore, the question of how we should embrace the concept of artificial intelligence, which has begun to encroach into areas unique to humans, has also become a universal challenge for humanity. This year's World Knowledge Forum will serve as the starting point of our efforts to find solutions to these newly emerging problems facing humanity. In 1202, Italian mathematician Fibonacci introduced the concept of the number zero, invented by Indians and used by the Arab world to Europe. He was influenced by the Islamic mathematician Al Khwarizmi. The number zero established itself in European society, overcoming resistance from the Christian Church, which rejected the existence of zero, stating that God was perfect and would never leave a blank number. In the late 17th century, German mathematician Leibniz used the concept of zero to create the binary system. Leibniz's binary system is said to have been inspired by the Chinese idea of yin and yang, so it can perhaps be called the culmination of Indian, Chinese, and European wisdom. On November 20th, 1947, Bell Telephone Laboratories unveiled the little three-legged thing to the world, the transistor. An electronic implementation of the concept of binary. Time magazine reported the finding as the little brain cell created by human hand, knowing intuitively the massive changes that transistors would bring. A year later, American mathematician and computer scientist Claude Shannon also applied the concept of the binary system to devise a way to convey information digitally. As such, the digital age had begun. The semiconductor revolution that began with the transistor and evolved into the AI revolution had two directions in terms of technological innovation, integrated and parallel. Integration is at the heart of the semiconductor revolution. Semiconductors have evolved according to this law and now contain billions of transistors on a single chip. It is chat GPT that proved the power of the parallel. It revolutionized the amount of parallel processing in smart devices, allowing them to produce new information. NVIDIA could grow from a mere gaming graphics card company to a company worth over one trillion US dollars because its founder, Jensen Huang, recognized the value of parallelism. He saw the potential for GPUs that could simultaneously process large amounts of data to be used in every industry beyond gaming and applied it to AI. Innovators from Fibonacci to ChatGPT's Sam Altman have been creating new values on the ideas of those who came before them. They have stood on the shoulders of giants to reach new heights. The fact that the term algorithm, which refers to how AI works, comes from mathematical genius Al Khwarizmi proves this. 
Over the past 75 years, one thing has remained constant. Disruptive innovation has taken place in the magnetic field of Silicon Valley. Kevin Kelly, executive editor of Wired magazine, once argued that innovation takes place gradually, sternly, and inevitably within what he calls the technion. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'd like to continue my speech. Thousands of years of human technological progress are now blooming in full, and these advanced cutting-edge technologies are now bringing a great variety of changes to our lives. As you know, Apple launched the Silicon Valley Technion with digital products like the Macintosh, iPod, iPhone, iPad, and Apple Watch. When Apple introduced its products, the world's reaction was probably similar to the shock people felt when they saw the advances in generative AI. But AI is just the beginning. We are seeing the likes of quantum computing, robotics, CTAC, bio, and other innovative and disruptive new technologies pushing the boundaries of what humans have imagined for thousands of years. Now, the techno Big Bang era is with us. To survive in the techno Big Bang, we must pay attention to the Grand Technium Alliance. There's a company called ASML. It is headquartered in the Netherlands and is the only company in the world producing EUV lithography systems. Without ASML's EUV equipment, Samsung, TSMC, and other semiconductor companies cannot produce cutting edge semiconductors. In fact, ASML was a small company that started in a warehouse in Veldhoven, the Netherlands, in 1984. At the time, the United States and Japan were engaged in an escalating trade dispute. In an effort to keep Japan in check, three organizations each contributed key technologies to ASML. Philips in the Netherlands, provided electronics technology. Carl Zeiss in Germany provided optics technology. And the US National Laboratories provided the original lithography technology, which is the process of etching circuits onto semiconductor wafers. As a result, ASML has grown into a multinational company with 38,000 employees in 20 countries around the world. I brought up ASML because it is the prime example of a grand technium alliance. The technium forms giant network-like structures that evolve as they converge with each other. That's why no one company or country can monopolize them. Now, stand on the shoulders of giants and take on the wisdom and knowledge that will take you through this age of techno Big Bang. Ladies and gentlemen, expand your knowledge. Thank you for listening.